a lot of us have walked into a market either locally or while traveling and wondered if the vendors are honest and the products are of a good quality. What if you were able to walk into a local bazaar in the Middle East or North Africa and knew with certainty that all the products in each and every shop were of the best quality and that if you gave them a credit card, the transaction would be safe and protected. The Saffron Soup is the digital version of this experience through our innovative technology-based platform. That's good. As of 31st of May, 2021, we have more than 30,000 visitors and growing, amongst which 25% are returning visitors. Our bilingual platform has more than 18,000 visitor customers and more than 600 sellers listing 4,300 unique products. Where to get these sellers? According to IFC advisory services, there are more than 23 million micro, uh, medium, and small businesses in the Middle East, North Africa, and Turkey. 25% of those are small merchants, home businesses, craftsmen, small batch manufacturers. We will be targeting 5% of these MSMEs. So our total obtainable market, it will be uh, 5% and our, uh, sorry, our total accessible market is around 5 million, which we believe those small sellers are able to become uh, or can they, can they have products to sell on our marketplace. So uh, around 5 million uh, total, accept, uh, total accessible market. What makes us different, unlike other marketplaces who serve as an additional channel for known brands to reach local uh, consumers, the Saffron Soup works as a vehicle for local and small micro businesses to reach regional and global individual and corporate buyers. We don't keep stock or operate warehouses or invest in logistics. Our bilingual platform doesn't need technical skills from our sellers or knowledge. The key to our success and growth enabling our sellers and offering them more services like shipping options, digital marketing, and other services. If you look, if you look at the service that the Saffron Spook offers to our buyers, it's similar to what other marketplaces provide, but for niche, hard to find products. On the other hand, we provide the sellers the ability to have their own branded online shop, yet benefit from being on a marketplace for competitive shipping contracts, digital marketing services, catalog distribution, and other services which we offer currently or we will be offering in the future. And most of all, they will take advantage of the niche consumer community that come to discover new products on our platform. Our growth evolves around growing our sellers and enabling them to sell more, obviously. In year five, we plan to reach 1.7% of the total micro and small businesses that produce or sell non-mass produced products. So we were talking about 23 million micro and small businesses in uh, Meta region, Middle East, North Africa, and Turkey, among which we have 25%, which is around 5 million are the total accessible market. Our objective in year five is to take 1.7% of the total uh, uh, MSMEs of the total accessible market. Our gross merchandise value was calculated based on the average annual sales per seller for 2020. So we took our total sales in 2020 and we divided them by the number of sellers. And to be conservative, and we forecasted our, our growth for the coming years based on that, how many sellers we, we are going to recruit and based on the annual average sales per seller for 2020. And to be conservative, we didn't take into account that enabling our sellers, providing them with training, more services will grow their sales. Also, another fact that by active seller recruitment, where we will be checking, where we will be targeting sellers that add value and variety to our marketplace, either because of the range of the products that they, uh, that they provide or their social media presence or others. And by that, our objective is in year five, we will be our gross merchandise value, which is our gross revenues from, from our total sales is around 72 million, which doesn't make, doesn't come up to 0.5% of the forecasted e-commerce market in the MENA at that time. 
our pre-money valuation based on discounted uh, was based on discounted cash flow. And for sure, it's backed up by 24 investors. Till today, we have raised 1-1% of our uh, targeting funding, and we are open for overfunding. Our funding will be spent mainly to catalyze our growth, with 43% to be spent on marketing, 19% on operation. It's important to know that the operation, it includes the seller's success team, which we will be, they will be enabling our sellers, which we believe if we enable them, they will be our marketeers. And 15% will be spent, only 15% will be spent on updating the platform, rolling out new features and so on. And the rest for sure is gonna be with spent on man management, minor capital expenses and others. What makes us unique? We believe that we have a great chances to succeed and to be tough competitor in the region's e-commerce market, mainly for the following reason. First of all, our expenditure is dynamic. Why? Because we already built our marketplace platform technology-wise. We require very low capital expenses. As to our marketing and operation expenses that makes both together 72% of our spending can be dynamically increased or decreased based on results. So I don't have to spend in technology or capital and then ah, wait to see if, there, if I get results or not. We already did that. Now what we will be doing is we will be uh, marketing and growing our platform. And at any time, if the results aren't satisfactory, we can change the plan. So, uh, and our plan or our model is always to, in order to increase efficiency that we will test optimize and then scale. I mean, when it comes to the uh, marketing and growth efforts. Also, our uh, operation costs are so low compared to any other uh, platform or e-commerce platform or major ones in the region. We will be among the first who will utilize inside sales and seller support to target small and micro businesses in the region. Add to that, we will have 100% digital operation with the ability to go 100% remote in zero time. Uh, we aggregate small businesses in the region. Thus, we are able to offer competitive shipping contracts. So our the shipping contracts that we provide to our sellers today is from the same courier company. It's best from the best offer that any of our sellers got. Why? Because we simply aggregate those. So they're going to have more shipments with us. That's why everybody will benefit. Our seller will have competitive shipment. We will be reselling shipment services. And for sure, our buyers will have competitive shipping prices. Um, and also what's important about aggregating those is that we are offering in one place, one platform, to the global customers and regional buyers, a huge, a vast variety of hard to find products, which are historically available in highly fragmented markets. Unlike other markets, our market strategy doesn't rely only on digital marketing and advertisement. Our focus will be on building a community of sellers and buyers by enabling our sellers to market their products and shops and bring their customers to the saffron soup. In return, they will be benefiting from the customers that brought by other sellers. So every every seller will bring their own uh, some of their uh, consumers, and they will be cross selling. And this is what makes us different. Finally, to introduce our team, Shan is um, our guidance. She's a co our co-founder a passionate maker and advocate for small businesses in the region. And she provides us with the guiding principle for the Saffron Soup. Dieter, my old friend, is our advisor. He comes from a rich internet technology background. Um, he guides the Saffron Soup on digital marketing and product development strategies and what are the new trends in the market. And last, myself, I'm the CEO and the co-founder. So, Thank, Thank you. you. Uh Thank you, Basel. Um, We have two, three questions. I'll start with the first. It relates to your uh, customers, your desired number of customers in, re in year five. Um, how are customers? you? Yeah, in year five. How you expect, to, sorry, sellers. How are you expected to reach 800, uh, sorry, 80,000 sellers in year five on your website? Okay, so first of all, 
like according to IFC advisory uh, reports, you know, in the region, uh, there are 23 million micro and small businesses. A lot of those, they offer services, transportation or others, but around 25% of those, they can be our sellers. So we are talking about a total accessible market of 5 million, okay? So we believe this figure is achievable as to the total accessible market and total obtainable market, which we set as 1.7. How are we gonna reach those? I don't think that we will have a difficulty to market, like to, 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 to reach a seller and tell them, listen, you want to have the online presence? You can have it. You want to have your own, uh, own brand? You will have it. Uh, do you need to pay subscription or technical services? No. Do you need digital market? We will give it to you. And in return, we will take only 18% from, uh, uh, from their uh, transactions. So and today, for example, we have, without doing any activities to target sellers, just word of the mouth and our, 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 our like, uh, presence is like in big uh, uh, percentage of it is only in UAE. Uh, we have more than 100 uh, sellers who apply or 100 individuals, small businesses who apply to become sellers on our platform. So uh, we believe this market, uh, this number, uh, there is a huge market and uh, we can reach more. Uh, gonna be, we, we will have a uh, dedicated seller success team. Uh, we will be generating more material in order to help and to, uh, to, uh, to train these sellers. And as I told you, I don't think that there is any difficulty in turning those by giving them like a global reach to the global markets, regional, cross-border shipping, shipping contracts, making everything for their e-commerce easy. And in return, they don't have to do any capital expenses. It's only that we take a very competitive commission, which is... But now it's like it's flexible plans, but I'm, it's like the most common is eighteen uh, percent. Okay, thanks. And how do you expect to get seventy-two point uh, six million at the end of year five in gross merchandise value? Well, our mathematics it was simple mathematics. We didn't have to to, to look too much. We took twenty twenty with all the pros and cons that it had. Okay, and we calculated at that time how many sellers we had. Hmm? And we, we calculated the average uh, sales per seller. And then we, as like expl explained in the, in the slide before, it's like to reach those sellers, we multiplied that by the number of sellers that we, we think we are able to recruit or we will be recruiting. And we got, uh, we got these results. Okay. Also, there's something important here to mention, which is like active seller recruitment. We will be targeting specific sellers who think that they have a brand, you know, or they will add value. So this will increase the efficiency. Also, whenever we enable them, whenever we have a dedicated team calling the sellers, advising them, preparing webinars on how to place them, uh, how to list their uh, their products, uh, giving them more information about the features, always engaging the sellers. We believe the, the efficiency or the, 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 the sales, the revenues per seller is gonna increase all of these weren't taken into account calculating these figures, by the way, okay, just to be conserved. So we believe we're going to reach more than this. And all these figures, just because we want to be on the very conservative side of, uh, of our proposal. Okay, so you're saying that basically by growing your seller network, you're also growing your buyer network. And that's the differentiation in terms of your model, ultimately. And exactly. At the same time, if I understand, you also are able to demand a premium because you're selling niche products and products that are difficult to find. So basically, as a result, combined results would be achieving that higher gross merchandise value. Exactly. So basically, it's unique. If you go to the global marketplaces, uh, Amazon and Noon, and check the products that each of them have, you will find like around, I'm not gonna, I don't have figures, but you'll find the same products, the same brands, Samsung, Nike, whatever the big brands. And they are competing with them. Like sometimes they have to reduce the, uh, the, the margin sometimes, you know? So this is what makes us unique. We are, we have unique products. We look after these small businesses and we expose them. The, our buyers, they will come to find unique products. They come to discover products, to search for it, to check what's new and so on. Okay, and I guess here there's a social aspect in a sense that you're also saving these micro businesses and that craftsmanship that's, you know, been reserved for many years and you're passing that's, it. That's so true, but the difference is like, 
we want to help those businesses to exist and to be prosperous and to grow. It's not like, oh, we should save them, we should you know, change the regulations. No, by going to the Saffron Soup, by aggregating them, by providing them all those services, they will be able to survive without you have to change, you know, the laws and regulations. You know, some countries, they have them to, in order yeah. to support these, or to keep them alive. Yeah, which is ultimately saving them. One more point uh, or question is any update on your rollout plan? outside the GCC or in the larger, uh, wider MENA region or outside MENA as well? Excuse me, can you ask the question again? Any update on rolling out into new markets in MENA or outside MENA? Okay, so basically, if we go into our, how are we gonna go? Uh, our plan is when, when we roll out, it's like in UAE, we have sellers, buyers, we focus also on the local community aspect. Okay for different reasons and for sustainability in the growth and for the long run. So if you look into, into this chart where we'll be focusing, in year one, we'll be focusing on GCC and Livon. In year two, we're gonna expand into North Africa. We didn't have like, we don't have enough data to decide like, should we go for Egypt alone? And then we go to Morocco and, uh, and Tunisia. And we believe that there is a lot of potential over there, especially for these merchants, makers and so on. And in year three or uh, before year five, we will be opening also to Turkey. So this is our rollout uh, plan. Now we are focusing on GCC and Levant. Next will be North Africa, and then later will be Turkey. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot again and congratulations.